Today we shall discuss some of the most popular and most important generalizations of the notion of topology or topological space. Let us recall the very definition of topology. Assume that we have certain non-empty universe, X, and certain family tau which is contained in X. We call it topology if and only if the empty set belongs to tau. The whole universe belongs to this family. If we have certain family of sets, finite or infinite, such that each of each element of this family um, belongs to tau, then also their union belongs to tau, to our topology. Moreover, we have this restriction that if we have two sets A and B such that both of them belong to tau, then also their intersection is in our family. We say that elements of tau are open sets. This is one of the most important notions in topology. And that their complements are closed sets. As we can see, each topology contains empty set and the whole universe. Each topology is closed under arbitrary unions and finite intersections. If it is closed under arbitrary intersections, then we call it Alexandrov topology. Some typical examples of topological spaces, anti-discrete topology, which contains only empty set and the whole universe, discrete topology, which is identical with a power set of X. Then we have a um, finite universe, which contains three elements, say A, B, C, and the following families are topologies, examples of topology on X. Natural topology on the real line is generated by the set of all open intervals. Clearly, each open interval uh, may be considered as open set. Arrow topology. Um, it is also based on the idea of real line. However, it's different than natural topology, as we can see here. It is right half open topology. Moreover, any metric space with topology introduced by metric row in the following manner will, can be considered as topological space. We assume that k of xr is a ball with center x and radius r. In particular, open balls on mm, real plane and open balls in any n-dimensional real space are examples of open sets and they generate topology just like open intervals on the real line. What about generalizations of the notion of topology? Already in 1940s, Choquette introduced pre-topologies, which are beyond the scope of our presentation. They are based on the idea of filter. Later, Divine recognized several classes of sets which have weaker properties than standard open sets so-called alpha, semi, pre, beta, and B open sets. Then we have super topologies of Masur, and then we have generalized, probably uh, the most popular, generalized topologies of Akos Chasar. They are families closed under arbitrary unions. Of course, it's possible that there are additional conditions, but what is required is that they are closed only under, at least, only under arbitrary unions. In fact, the whole research direction has flourished in the past two decades, and nowadays we have many similar concepts like minimal structures, weak structures, generalized weak structures. Almost each of these frameworks is equipped with notions of continuity, convergence, filter density, compactness, or connectedness. This line of research allows us to discuss minimal conditions which should be satisfied by a given space in order to be able to speak about sensible and useful mathematical structure of this space. In other words, the question is, which are the minimal restrictions which should be imposed on our universe? Well, there are also some practical applications of 
weak spaces. They are useful in classification of finite universes and their subsets. And this is important in some branches of computer science, like pattern recognition, formal concept analysis, and data mining. In the next sections, we shall briefly present some of the most popular generalized spaces. We are concentrated on those which are in some sense simple. It means that they are based on the natural assumption that we may remove some of the restrictions which are typical for the ordinary topological space. However, we shall not deal with merotopic spaces, syntopogenic structures, Grothendieck topologies or delft knebusch generalization. First of all, we have generalized topological spaces. We, in fact, we have already introduced them. They've been defined um, by Akos Chasar, but also by other authors independently. And as we can see, the idea is that we have family which is closed under arbitrary unions. Some examples of finite generalized topological spaces are listed here. Um, universe which contains three elements, universe uh, which contains four elements. Why not? Other examples of generalized topological spaces are here. So-called integer forbidden generalized topology and so-called co-singleton topology. All these non-empty sets which are not singletons are open. Some additional examples of generalized topological spaces. They are slightly more complex. As we can see here, you may discuss um, these um, examples. Infratopological space. In general, the following definition of infratopological space is taken from the paper of Al Othari. Assume that X is non empty universe. We say that tau ix contained in X is an infratopology on X, if and only if, well, empty set and the whole universe are in our family, and we have closure under finite intersections, maybe not under arbitrary or even finite unions, but under finite intersections. We think that it's reasonable to highlight those infratopologies which are closed under any intersections by naming them Alexander of infratopologies. Some examples of finite infratopological spaces have been listed here. Take a look at here, singleton of A, its union with singleton of B gives us AB, which belongs to topological space, infratopological space, but union of B and C does not belong. So it's not closed under finite uh, and moreover, of course, arbitrary unions, but it's closed under finite intersections. Here we have some additional examples of infratopological space. For example, assume that our universe is real line and the only infra-open sets are the whole set R, of real numbers and those subsets of R whose length, namely Lebesgue measure, does not exceed certain constant y. Again, we have Alexander of infratopology, which can be easily transformed into the generalized one. Well, because we may consider generalized infratopologies um, in which the whole universe may not be open. Here are other examples, some of them more complex like the third one. The only infra-open sets are R, empty set, singleton of zero, and intervals of this form, yes, which are close on the right side, and intervals of the form from B to plus infinity closed on the left side, where B is greater or equal to zero. Intersection of two such intervals has the proper form, it may be empty, but the union may be beyond our family. Then we have minimal structures. Supposedly, they've been introduced by Neury and some other authors. Well, the very idea is that M is a minimal structure even only if empty set belongs to M and the whole universe belongs to M. Of course, each topological space is also minimal and also generalized and also infra. Some basic examples of minimal structures, well, not very complicated. 
weak structures considered probably by Chassar. The only condition is that empty set belongs to our structure. Any collection which contains empty set may be considered as a weak structure. Finally, we have generalized weak structures. Well, they've been introduced under this name by Avila and Molina, but they are just arbitrary families of sets. If X is a non-empty universe, then any family containing X may be considered as generalized weak structure. Some of these notions, as we've already said, seem to be artificial and maybe too vague. However, as we said earlier, the idea is that we want to check how far we can go in building analogous of classical topological notions like convergence, openness, closeness, or density. Thank you.